Remember these words from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. This is love for God, to obey His commands, and His commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Well, we are coming to you today from one of the most absolutely outrageous Christian congregations in America today. And that is the Cathedral of Praise right here in Arlington, Texas. And if you can believe it, it is Easter Sunday morning. What a way to dress on Easter. What a way to come into the house of God. But we are here because today is our Breakthrough Sunday. Everybody say breakthrough. breakthrough. Well, go ahead and be, well, go ahead and be seated. If you got a Bible, open it up to Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. And uh, the, the thing about today, for the sake of guests, you know, we don't want to scare any guests or visitors. But we're here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, we're here to celebrate His resurrection power in our lives, in every aspect of our lives, including our finances. Yes. Luke chapter 21, as he looked up, Jesus saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put into very small copper coins. I tell you the truth, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. And you know, when the Lord uh, spoke to me about three months ago, about this day, Easter Sunday, 1996, and what I was to give in this challenge offering, because today is the day. Say, today is the day. We're going to pay this building off, and then we're going to uh, start our war chest to go out and find that property and build that building and go on about the business of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. But in the process of that, the Lord spoke to us very clearly how that our destinies are intertwined. As it goes with the house of God, so it goes with your house. And that's been the theme that the Lord has had on our minds in recent days. And then he gave me this passage. And, you know, I didn't really, uh, that's not my favorite passage because it has been so abused religiously. The, the emphasis is always on the fact that she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. And whenever you've heard the, uh, someone uh, minister on that passage, generally, most times, they emphasize the poverty. They emphasize not having enough. But the Lord's given me a few points of revelation about these uh, few verses I want to share with you this morning. One is that this transpires, this event transpires subsequent to the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ on the Sunday we call Palm Sunday. Now, I mean, stop and think about it. From the time he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday uh, until uh, he was betrayed and handed over to men to be crucified, he only had four or five days left to live in, uh, in freedom and liberty. But with only four or five days left, he took time to go down to the house of God and to observe the way people gave and how much they gave. Now, see, there are folks, and they would have us believe that, that God's not interested in our giving, but they are the exact same folks that would have us believe that God is not interested in our pocketbooks and in our personal finances. I'm here to tell you this morning, unapologetically and unashamedly, that God Almighty is alive. His, his God-man, His prophet, His God-man is alive. All the other so-called gods, and you know there are many. That we got the multicultural God in America. We got the secular humanist God in America. We got the almighty dollar. I mean, like in Japan, they've got over a thousand gods just in one country. But all of them 
have left their prophets in the grave. All of them have been powerless to raise their prophets from the dead, save only one. That is the Christian God, Yahweh God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I am here to tell you today, unapologetically, without shame, without hesitation, that this God is interested in every aspect and area of your life, your physical body, your home, your marriage, your family, your children, and also with your finances and your money. It has been too long in these United States that we have let others get to the front of the parade. It has been too long in these United States that we have let others prosper financially and rule it over us. The Word of God tells me that if I will live my life under God, if I will do what the Word of God says, if I will obey His commands, if I will follow His decrees, if I will do what God has told me to do, then my God has given me His Word. He's going to set me on the top. I'm going to be on the top, and I'm not ever going to be on the bottom. So the point is not so much that, that she was poor. The point is she gave her best gift. And that's, that's the word the Lord's given me. She gave her best gift. And the Lord uh, instructed me to come here this morning and to say this. Remember when you first got saved? Remember when you first got born again, how fast your prayers would get answered when you said to the Lord that you needed healing in your body or when you first got born again and you needed a car, didn't have a car. You first got born again, you needed a job, didn't have a job. Well, see, he told me that, that in those early days, when you are poor, when you have nothing, when you're down, when you're out, it's almost easier to give everything because everything's not a lot. And maybe everything in those early days was $10 or $20 or $100. And he told me that what happens to his people is as they begin to prosper, as they begin to move along, as God begins to bless them, they stay with the same giving pattern. They're still in the $10 rut. They're still in the $20 rut. They're still in the $100 rut. But now they've got the job. Now they've got the car. Now they are more blessed than they were when they first got born again. And the Lord, the Lord showed me that it's not so much what you give, but it is whether your giving is commensurate with the way the Lord your God has blessed you. And that means that, that, means that if I want ever-increasing blessings in my life, then I've got to give ever-increasing amounts out of my life. Now listen, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, in 1993, I bought my first Harley Davidson. I mean, man, we scrimped, we saved. Uh, I didn't have the money to buy it. I had maybe half of what I needed, and I didn't want to borrow. You know, no bona fide word of faith pastor can borrow money on a Harley Davidson. And so I made an arrangement with a store. I said, well, let me, let me leave it here for three or four months, and I'll send you money as I can, and then when I get it paid off, then I'll pick it up. And they agreed to that, and that's what I did. And I got that maybe in May or June of 1993. Lo and behold, the Lord spoke to us about going on television. Here, we're on television from Florida to the state of Washington, and guess what God told me to give in that offering in the fall of 1993? Yeah. You know what he asked me to give? Something that meant something to me. If your giving to breakthrough is something that does not mean something to you, I mean, if $100 doesn't really mean that much to you, then you know what? Then that's not really a breakthrough type gift. If $500 is not really anything that's going to mean something to you, then that $500 is not really a breakthrough gift. You see, God, God will work in our, on our behalf if we will release, everybody say release. release, if we will release our faith not only by our spoken word and confession, but if we will release our faith by our actions and by our deeds. So I, I didn't give the motorcycle physically, but I did sell the motorcycle, and I brought all the, all the money from that motorcycle and in uh, October of 1993, and within 45 days, within 45 days, great, vast amounts uh, of blessing were released into my life. But not only this, not only that, but within 45 days, there was about $200,000 
was released to come into this ministry so that when we, when we lit up the cameras, there was not one debt payment, there was not one lease payment, there was not one debt of any kind. I am here to testify that if you will give God not your lease, not what you don't want, not what Salvation Army refused to pick up, See, if you want a blessing, you got to be a blessing. If you want a blessing, you've got to give something that means something to you. I remember years ago, we'd only been married two years, and, and uh, we ventured out from owning one automobile. We bought a second automobile. It's worth maybe uh, $2,000 or so. We bought that second automobile, but you know what? I mean, we, were, we just weren't making it. We were newlyweds. I was in school. My wife was in school. I was working. She was working. And it just seemed like every month, you know, we were $100, $200 behind. So I, I apologized to my wife, and then I sold her car, and, and I thought, well, we'll just pay off a bill or two or here, save this money, and when things stabilize, then we'll get another car. But you know what? Things didn't stabilize. And, and that money dwindled down from $2,000, $1,900, dollars on down to where we got to about $1,400. And I told her one evening, I said, I am not going to let my finances be gobbled up like I'm being eaten alive by a herd of ducks. Have you ever felt like you were being nibbled to death financially? I mean, you know, the, the refrigerator breaks down and the car breaks down and this and that and the other and it's coming from all sides. I said, no, if we're going to lose it, let's not lose it. Let's at least sow it and plant it into the kingdom of God. John 12, 24, King James. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a kernel of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. The word says, Paul says over there in Galatians 6, 7 to 10, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. So when you give something that means something to you, it doesn't have to be something physical. Last, last uh, fall when we did a, a special offering, it wasn't something physical that the Lord told us to do. It was something financial. But whatever it is, the point is not for me to tell you what to give. See, I don't know your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, your visions. I don't know your financial status. I don't know where you've come from. I don't know what you have, and I don't know what you lack. But God does. God knows what you want. God knows where, where you've come from. God knows what you're believing Him for. But you see, there it is. It comes right down to the rub, and the rub is faith. Do you believe on this Easter Sunday morning that your God has risen from the dead? Or did you put on your hat and your sh shiny shoes to come down here and act religious on this Easter Sunday morning? I mean, after all, we got folks here this morning that we, will, we have not seen since Easter of 1995. And unless you get born again or recommit your life to Christ, we probably won't see you until Easter of 1997. That's why I got to come on strong while I got you. But I mean, are we here? Are we here because we believe that we've got a live God in heaven and he raised his God man, his prophet, Jesus Christ up out of that grave on that Easter Sunday morning? I mean, do we believe that? Do we believe that he cares about us? Do we believe what Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes? to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I mean, if we believe the Word of God, if we believe that He is alive, then we need to listen to His voice when He speaks to us, and we need to obey that voice. I want you to look at one more passage quickly, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Then He said to them, this is Jesus, then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Now, see, a few months back, the Lord spoke to me about what I was to give in this challenge offering. And what he spoke to me about giving is is uh, this right here. And when he, when he gave me that word, I laughed because I thought, it is so much like God to ask you to give something that means something to you. If you know me, if you've been in this church, uh, I, I can take or leave things. 
I mean, things, I don't get attached to things. My wife teases me and says, everything's for sale except me and the kids. And you know, that's kind of the way it is. I mean, houses, cars, whatever, I don't get attached to things. Some folks, you know, they want to be buried in their automobile. I tell you, I'm, I don't get attached to things. But this Harley Davidson right here was the first one that my wife went touring with me on. I mean, this is the one that, that my sweetie and I went to pick up in El Paso and, and we rode into Santa Fe and discovered those things together and, and Taos and we rode together in, in uh, Yellowstone and rode together through Bryce Canyon and, and rode together and, uh, by the way, fell off of uh, at the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Not in the Grand Canyon, but at the Grand Canyon. And... Uh, and I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, it's something that involves not just something that is tangible, not something that is just valuable, worth about $17,000, $18,000, not just something that is valuable in that way, but something that is laced with memories and fond memories. And I thought, you know, that is so much like God. So much like God. So much like God. See, a lot of folks, they misunderstand him because they think that, that he's horning in on their fun because that's what he does. He comes into our lives and he makes demands. But he's not making demands to uh, rain on our parade and to mess up our little party. But he wants to check the sincerity and the devotion and the fealty and the faithfulness and the obedience of our hearts. Do you love God or do you love things? Do you love God or do you love money? See, and the undiscovered truth that many Christians have never come in to realize is that when you have God, you've got all the things you need. When you have God, God's got all the money. The gold is his and the silver is his and the cattle on a thousand hills. I don't know if there are Harley Davidsons in heaven, but if there are, I've sent two up already. But not only that, not only that, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You want to reap a little tiny harvest? Then go ahead and give your little tiny gift. But my wife and I, as the years go by, we get crazy and militant in this vision God has given us. That once I come into the faith message, once I get my body healed, once my home is in order, once I get my bills paid off, once I'm blessed, is that all there is? Is that all there is? Are we going to be the tail end of America, even though we may be out of debt ourselves? And the Lord gave me a new vision of faith. You have used your faith on finances. You've used your faith to build a ministry. You've used your faith on your physical body. Now, lift up your eyes and see that this world-conquering faith that is on the inside of you can be turned on America. And you, together with other faith-filled children of God across the land, can rise up. It doesn't just have to be the world and the worldly that get blessed financially. I see men and women this morning, and you should already own your own business. You should already own your own business rather than simply be laboring for another. Let God get involved in your household finances. Let God get involved in your financial bottom line. Get the power of the resurrection, resurrected Jesus released and turned loose in your life financially. I believe it is time for the body of Christ to stop just talking about how the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. But it is, begin, it is time for us to begin to act like we believe the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Do not be deceived. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You know why Christians are poor? Because Christians are cheap. You ain't ever as bad as when you're bad in the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to just scare you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why. Because, because they're trying to hold on. They, they, they had somebody read to them out of Luke 21 about this poor woman. And they got it set in their mind that they're poor. They got it set in their mind that all they got is their two copper coins. And I can't give that. Or even if I give that, it's no big deal. It's just two copper coins. But let this vision 
Let this anointing get into your heart and into your life. God has called you his own. God has adopted you into his family. God has got a vested interest in causing great wealth to come into your life because God wants to turn America around. Do not be deceived. Whatever a man sows, that also shall he reap. You want to sow something small, then you know what? You just go ahead. I mean, excuse me, you want to reap something small, then you go ahead and sow something small. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But you know what? I've sown Harley Davidson's and I have sown automobiles and guess what's coming up in my garden? Amen. Say to the Lord, I, I, I've asked you to over the last few weeks, Lord, what would you have me give? And you all here this morning, just pardon me because I want to address these people from Florida to Washington. And see, you're not a part of Cathedral of Praise. But obviously, because you're watching, you are a part of Overcoming Faith Television. The address is coming onto the screen. We, we wouldn't ask you to do what we're doing, and that is to give to pay this property and building off right here locally because you're not here physically to be a part of this church. But you know what you can do is you can ask the Holy Spirit of God right where you are. And that is, Father God, Holy Spirit of God, what would you have me do a as a challenge offering to break through? Everybody say breakthrough. Break See, that's what we're doing. That's what we're about. Are you tired of the way things are? Are you ready to move on to something new, something bigger, something better? Then you better check with the Holy Spirit of God and ask him what it, what it is that you ought to do. And whatever he says do, then you do it. That address is on the screen, Overcoming Faith Television. Let us hear from you. And send your best gifts. See, that's what it's got to be. I said, that's what it's got to be. Because these are the end times. We don't have another 40, 50 years to mess around and be poor. If the word says the wealth of the wicked is being stored up for the righteous, then we best get right on with it. Because that old world out there is getting us closer and closer to the end. This morning, I believe if you will obey God, not do anything I'm telling you to do, because I'm not telling you what to give, but I believe that if you will do what the Holy Spirit of God would have you do and give it in faith, then you have opened up the door for a great, a mighty breakthrough harvest to come back into your life. Now to all the hardworking, decent, moral, patriotic Americans out there, until next time, remember, this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Hallelujah!